truth. You've heard all these other folks claiming to tell the gospel truth. Ah, you don't believe it, do you? But you know, you didn't see the leprechaun here. He didn't bring it with him, did he? He did not bring I brought evidence with me. So I'm going to tell you the story. This involves me and my daddy. I was right young to be doing all this, but uh, you know, my daddy kind of believed in hauling you right along, didn't he? He'd just haul you right along and let you take part in things. Daddy was a Methodist preacher. He didn't really take his call to preach real serious until after he came home from that two year vacation he had in the South Pacific in uh, 44, 45, with some other United States Marines. And uh, after he decided to take that call to us, Seriously, he thought he ought to go get educated and learn how to be a good preacher. And he went up to Asbury College, Wilmore, Kentucky. I mean, y'all may know where that is. Georgia boy up there. And uh, hauled his uh, little boy and four daughters along. Got up there and uh, uh, the professor there kind of arranged for him to get a little practice by sending him off to South Ohio, the Southern Counties, Ohio. Adams County, Ohio, right down on the... On, on the Ohio River there. If you ever heard of the Serpent Mound, being where we are right here, y'all know about the Serpent Mound, one of the great archaeological sites in America, you know. Uh, uh, beautiful uh, Adena civilization. Beautiful mound. If you ever get a chance to go up there and visit, do. Uh, there's also a huge crater there where an asteroid hit the Earth, you know, a gazillion years ago. Interesting <laughs> place to visit. But uh, my daddy went up there to serve three little old churches on charge. There was Duncansville, Cedar Mill, and uh, Jacksonville. Duncansville was one that had the parsonage, and we got to live in that on the weekend. Oh, it was a nice parsonage. It was a step up from the GI barracks where we were living there at, uh, at Asbury. Uh, had three bedrooms, had a nice little parlor with a pot belly stove in it, a kitchen with a wood stove in it, and a path. And that path went out to a, a, a really good outhouse. I mean, this was a classy outhouse. This was not one of your unpainted old shanty outhouses, you know. This was, this was concrete block, you know. It was painted. It was well ventilated. It was never really terribly offensive. But not only that, there was a paved path out to that outhouse. And those parishioners had come and had built a cover. They had a cover all the way from the back porch, all the way out to uh, that outhouse. It was really nice. And we really enjoyed our time there. Like I said, it was just on the weekends. At Asbury, you had classes on Saturday morning. And uh, had a, had a, we had three chapels a week. I went there later on. Uh, and uh, so uh, we'd head out from Wilmore there, uh, where the college was, on a Saturday afternoon. and up the roads to Southern Ohio. <coughs> and then Mondays, they didn't have school on Mondays because they had so many preachers in school there. <laughs> they, a lot of them needed time to get back from wherever they were, you know. So uh, we had quite a time. But you know, I hear people around here talking about uh, March 13th, 1993. How many of you know where you were? <laughs> and they talk about that. It was big snow. Now I was here. And that was a really respectable snow, but the winter of 1952, when I was five years, just five years old, I guess five years old, yeah, that was quite a winter up in Ohio. I mean, there was some real snow. The folks there were real good about keeping plenty of stove wood, you know, stacked up for the preacher in all three churches. You know, they'd get a chance to, they'd bring some stove wood in and stack it up along that path, you know all along the sides early in the winter, but that winter was a cold winter, and uh, you don't remember it, Debbie, you were too little, but uh, uh, it, we burned up a lot of stove wood that winter, it was cold. And by the time February came around, you know, uh, the, cold, the stove wood was just kind of stacked up close to the house there, right that back stew along that path, but not quite so much farther on. It was snowing something awful that February weekend we started up there. It was so bad that along the way Daddy stopped and put chains on the tires. You know, keep us on the road sliding around up there. It was really something. And uh, I got up there, and of course I had to head out to the bathroom first thing. And I uh, was <clears throat> headed down to the outhouse. And, and I could see the snow was already piling up around those that stacked wood there along the pathway. And then down there where it wasn't. 
thank goodness there was enough of an overhang that it wasn't really deep right there on the path, but it was already on that concrete path going down to the down to the outhouse. But I managed to slip and slide and get down there and do my business, get back and all. Uh, it was really snowing though, and uh, my folks were kind of worried that it was we were going to be snowed in for church day the next day, you know. And he had three churches to get to, hoping those chains would do the trick and all. But uh, you know, we big family, we all huddled into some into the bedrooms there, crawled in under all those quilts Mom always had around, and uh, and Mom and Dad probably told us a story too, and we went to sleep. You know, I felt like I slept real good, slept real long, but I woke up and it was just dark as it could be. Got up out of bed, I could see just a crack of light in there where the kitchen was. I need to use the bathroom again. So I went into the kitchen and there sat Mom and Daddy sitting around that dinette set there in that little kitchen. Uh, you know, a pot of coffee on the wood stove there, drinking a cup of coffee. Just, you'd think it was breakfast time. I said, Mom and Daddy, what y'all doing up in the middle of the night drinking coffee? And Dad said, it's not the middle of the night, son. He said that uh, we're snowed in. He said, there is snow up over the doors and windows. He said, I can't even get out of the doors except the back door that leads down to the outhouse. I said, well, I've got to go bathroom. He, he, he grabbed the flashlight. Along the way, he also put a little hatchet on his belt and said, come on, we'll take you out there. He pushed that door open and, and no trouble at all because those stacked wood by the door kind of kept us a place there. And we could get through there and he shined the flashlight down through there and it was like this tunnel, this gleaming tunnel. Uh, you know, there was snow packed all the way from the eaves of that thing, you know, down to the ground, you know. He took it, it was piled, he had to crouch some after we got on the ways, you know, to get through the snow to get us to the outhouse. And uh, so I got in there and did my cold business and <laughs> came back. And along the way, he had that hatchet because he wanted to knock some of those pieces of stove wood out of the ice there to take in the stoke up the fire a little bit. Uh, so uh, we got in there and we had a pretty good supply of provisions and all. And there was that little bit of stove wood left out there. And uh, so uh, he, he stoked everything up good. And, and, and we did all right that day. And then the next day, you know, I mean, that was, that was church day there, but there was no going to church. We were snowed totally, absolutely in. And nobody, we kept thinking somebody would come in and get us out of there, you know, something, but nobody showed up, you know. Another day, we ate some more, and stoked up that fire good. Things are going to melt in a little bit, right? We weren't too conservative with things yet. Another day, that pile of wood's getting on down, and the provisions are getting low, and we're starting to worry. Another day, and we're getting downright hungry and wondering what we need to do. Daddy said, I better see if I can bust out of here. Took the hatchets out, you know, he took me with him because Mama had those four others to look after. We went out that back door into that tunnel, that dark tunnel out there and started busting at that snow for a while, but we were just getting nowhere real quick and an idea popped in his head. Because he said, you know what? Those two stoves are still drawing real good. I got an idea. We went in the, the front one had kind of burned down anyway in the parlor in there. <clears throat> so he got a shovel and he shoveled out the coals and put them in the other one, you know. And when that thing had cooled down a little bit, he had a had a big step ladder out there. We brought that step ladder in, he climbed up there, put out some newspapers and all keep making a mess, and pulled that stove pipe out of the ceiling. And, and, and still make a little bit of a mess. It wasn't too bad. Put that aside and looked up through there and he said he could see some light up through that hole. And, and, but he couldn't see it very well. Got a crowbar and he pulled out enough boards so that he could crawl up in there. Got a good look and he said that there was a good three foot shaft up through the snow above, that, above the roof where the smoke and the heat from the stove had, had, had kept it melted as the snow came down. And of course, as it melted and refroze and all, it was just like a solid chimney up through there. He said he believed a man could get up through there if he could bust it out enough. But he said, Lord, it was 20, 30 feet up through there, you know. Lord have mercy. Mom said, well, we've got to have some food. We've got to get out of here. And there's no way it fits that tall. You know, if it's that high, we're never going to get out of here. So uh, he said, well, I'm going to give it a shot. And she said, well, I've got four girls here. You best take Terry with you. And Daddy was always game for that sort of thing. He got a great big old piece of rope, a long rope, you know, coiled that thing up, attached it to his, his belt, and then he just kind of tethered me to it, you know, tied it around my belt. And he started climbing up through there. He just hoisted me right up into 
couldn't really call it the attic, but that little space up there, you know. Then he climbed up through where he tore that hole in the roof and, and, and started climbing up through the ice. He had hacked him out some little toe holes and, you know, I, I had, of course, grabbed my little baby crocket hatch and had it on my belt. <laughs> I things too. I thought I was doing a good job, but basically he caught crawl up a full few feet and haul me up, you know, and then go up a little bit far and haul me up. But lo and behold, it really wasn't any more work than you, it wasn't as much work as you had thought to get up to the top. He managed to get up there, sit on the edge of that stone, and heist me up, and I wish you could have seen it. I mean, there was beautiful blue sky and white clouds up there, and nothing but white as far as you could see. I mean, there was just nothing to look. It was like we were in this great big basin, you know, between between Johnson Ridge over on this side, you know, way up there, and, and Mount Ebenezer over here right up against the, the Shawnee State Forest over on this side, you know. The Miami River was down there at the bottom somewhere, but you couldn't even see it. I mean, it was frozen over entirely. And and every, every little way, there was something that looked like a little doodle bug hole in the snow, but it was big, and it was where somebody else's chimney was, you know. There was little bug holes all over the place. And, and over this way, well, there was one thing that was kind of like a little pyramid in the snow, and we finally figured out what it was. The steeple of the Methodist Church in Duncansville was real tall, and this was just the tippy top of it, just kind of molding around with the ice and snow there. It was something else to behold. And one other thing, my daddy said, that's what we need right yonder. Up at the top of Johnson Ridge, there was a, must have been the tallest hickory tree in Adams County. It was a really tall tree sticking up out of the snow. And he said, we got some fuel up there. Let's go get it. He had that hat, axe, you know, and I had my little hatchet and his rope there. We started off across that snow. It had a pretty good crust on it, and it wasn't as bad walking as you might have think it, it might think, and, and we made it in reasonable time. Got up there to that tree, and my dad said, Praise the Lord, manna from heaven. Because that big old tree was covered with possums. Oh. <laughs> and he noticed that all of my stories have possums in them. I don't know how that happens. I do not know how that happens. But that tree was covered with possums. They were frozen stem. I guess every possum. In, in Adams County had tried to take refuge always a little farther up that great big tree. And they were just frozen like little Christmas ones on that tree. <laughs> and, and so my daddy got out that axe, and I tell you, I guess the inspiration of this manna from heaven had just, just got him going. He got that thing just in no time. He was hollering, Timber! And crash, that thing crashed down, and we started grabbing those possums. We picked up those possums, tied them all together by the tail, and tied them to that rope, and he tossed that rope. It was still tied around my, my waist, my belt, and, and uh, uh, tied it, uh, and, and threw, thrown the rope across that tree. Uh, and he started limbing the tree. Now that was gonna take him a while, and, and, and I hacked for a little while with my little baby crocket hatchet, but it wasn't doing much good, and pretty soon I kind of lost, lost interest in started playing. While my daddy was hacking away, I was up on that log, and there was lots of loose rope there, even though one end had possums on it over here, you know. And I was playing with that rope, you know. I was trying to make a loop out of it, you know, and I'd climb up on that thing and pretend like it was a horse, you know. I was just playing, having a good old time, and daddy was limbing, lopping those limbs off, left and right, lopping those limbs off, piling up over here, you know. He was trying to get it down to a log where he could bust it up in the stove wood, and, uh, I was having a great time here playing like a, my horse was going here and it felt like it with that, that axe going like it was. And lo and behold, he got down to that last limb and he was kind of fired up. I guess it was the last one. He got, whack! That limb locked off and it shook that whole big old log there up on top of Johnson Ridge and it started sliding while Daddy was moving this limb over. I was sliding on that limb, started sliding down that hill. You wouldn't have believed that thing started picking up speed. Daddy, hey! He turned around like he grabbed for that tree. Of course, if he caught it, it had just struck him on down. That was a big old tree. I'm headed down Johnson Ridge, right toward town on this gigantic log. I mean, it is whooshing down through there. I'm screaming, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy! Wind blowing. 
blowing through my hair, those possums bouncing along behind us, you know, back here, you know, you know something else. And you know, we were heading right down toward town. I could see our tracks, and I could see the hole down there that was our house down, you know, that hole down there. Here we go, whoosh, picking up speed all the time. After a while, my heart kind of got calmed down. I thought, well, this is a pretty good ride, you know. I'm holding on to that rope there, you know. Give you up, cowboy. I'm having a pretty good time. Whoosh, right down through there, right across the Miami uh, River, up the other side of the ridge, up toward uh, Mount uh, Ebenezer there, having a good old time. Those possums dancing along behind us, you know. Now, as gravity began to overcome the momentum here, it began to slow, you know. I thought, well, you know, I could just hop off up here. Wouldn't be a problem just to just hop off. I'd untied myself a little bit here, you know. And, but if I did, well, I'd be a couple of miles from my daddy. He'd cross a lot of snow and stuff. That, that'd be kind of scary. And besides, it's kind of fun. <laughs> you know, I had kind of my own personal screen machine here, you know. So I decided, well, I'll just take the ride back. And sure enough, that thing came to stop, started the other way. We passed the possum sitting there, you know, <laughs> until it straightened out. There it go again. And I noticed as I passed them, there was a little bit, kind of reminded me of cooking smell. Those possums, now I know the term sort now, it was the friction of those possums. They were beginning to cook a little bit. <laughs> they were. And woo, we're going down through there, you know. Oh, the creature came back up. There's the house right there. To whoop up to the top. My daddy's up there waiting. He's trying to get it timed just right so he's right at the right spot where it comes to, but he, he missed me. And you know, I was having such a good time, I wasn't quite ready anyway. So, hi, daddy, how you doing? Who sure we go again, you know? Right by our house again. Here come the possums again, right like this, you know. As we start back up Mount Ebenezer again, uh, and we're beginning to slow down again, you know, those possums come sliding by me. Because we slowed down on the tree so much. And I sniffed those things, and they cooked real good, and I'm beginning to worry that they might be overdone pretty soon. <laughs> you know, and that, that's, that's when the idea really hit. I mean, I had my David Crockett hatchet right there. I said, return the tree, Mama, deliver it, Mama. So all the way down, you know, here we go, I'm getting ready. You know, I got it already. I'm boosting myself here. Got this part tonight. It's over here. And I could not have timed it better. Just as we're getting close to our house there, I whacked through that rope. Those possums slid right up to the edge of that big hole that was our house. They were just waiting for us right there. I delivered the food. <laughs> up I go to the mountain again. I figure it's about time. As that thing slows down, my daddy says, get off and get off now. So I just did that. I, mean, I couldn't help myself. I had to do that. Ta da! <laughs> My daddy just shook his head. <laughs> Meanwhile, getting off, it's giving some impetus to that log somehow. This is getting long, isn't it? <laughs> this thing, it, 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 it gave us some, in, and it started twirling a little bit, and it flipped right over. And I noticed as it started down the mountain, that underside of it had been completely skint down to the wood. I mean, it was absolutely perfectly smooth, and now the other side was getting it. <laughs> oh, man, it was flying down through there while Daddy and I hauled limbs that we could down toward the hole that was our house. We got down through there, and we had our possum drop. Because <laughs> we still had rope on those possums, and Dad called out to Mama and said, got you, got you some manna from heaven, sweetheart. He lowered it down there, you know. Lowered down those possums to Mama. She took them out there. Lower down a limb, you know, then another limb, another limb, and then here, here comes Terry, and he lowered me down. <laughs> and and, and we, we, that's the way we got home with all that. And we ate pretty good for several days. Uh, had enough limbs. It was kind of hot fire with those things, but we had enough limbs to keep the fire going pretty good. Everything went real well. Just about the time Daddy was deciding, I'm going to have to climb out and see if I can find something else. We started hearing some dripping, and there was just a little bit of light showing at the top of one of the windows. And it wasn't any time before we were able to bust out. Saw other houses beginning to appear, people crawling out here and there, you know, getting busy. But the strangest thing was, going right by our house there was this big trough that extended all the way from the top of Johnson Ridge 
down across my river and back up to uh, <laughs> Mount uh, Ebenezer. And Dad said, get quiet. You hear something? And I listened and I could. I hear that. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. He said, take a look in that trough. And I leaned over and looked in that trough and sure enough, that log was still going back <laughs> and forth, back and forth. But of course, it was where it wasn't going very far at all. It wasn't going very fast at all, you know. Just going like that. Daddy said, we need the evidence. I'm a Methodist preacher. They'll never believe this story. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, we got it. Daddy had a little box he brought back from the South Pacific. We put it in that box, and I have it with me today. Others have told you all kinds of lies and had nothing to back it up. But ladies and gentlemen, I present to you today incontrovertible, in, I can say it, <laughs> incontrovertible evidence of the biggest hickory law <laughs> in the history of Adams County, Ohio. <laughs> 